So I'm back from Miles Beckler's house where we did a great discussion for his audience on his YouTube channel. I want you to check out the Q&A right now. All right, now you over here, we're gonna start talking to you if you're there. If there's any questions, we can start answering. Uh, you had some that I was supposed to answer previously, correct? Hi Facebook, hi Instagram, welcome to my world. My hip hop world. Okay, so uh, one of them was uh, was by Felipe. Wanted to know about leads. How to get leads? Uh, yes. How to consistently generate qualified leads for a digital marketing agency? All right. How to get leads? Qualified leads for a digital marketing agency. It's a good word. Yeah. Um, good to have the qualified on there. Yeah, qualified. So this is the I, I had this in, in my Bangkok talk, where one of the things that I. I get asked all the time, how do I get more customers? Or some variation, yep. which is what the leads question is. Uh, why do we want qualified leads? Because you want customers, right? So I did a search, simple Google search, for how to get more customers. Was it like 1.2 billion? Uh, 1.8 billion, billion results. results. Yeah. And the reality is, out of, out of those 1.8 billion answers to that one question, nearly all of them are identical. The thing is, is you already know, uh, or at least if you've been in business for a little while, you already know, you've already studied, you've already seen courses, you've already read a million blog posts, you've already seen all these different things that say, here's how to get a customer, here's how to get a lead, here's, how, uh, here's what you do. You already know it, you're just not doing it. Yeah. Uh, and, or if you're doing it, you're not doing it enough. I literally had a conversation this very morning where uh, my uh, business partner was saying, oh, I, I just don't know about this one thing that, that we're doing. I just don't know if we can deliver value. And I'm like, but you literally just delivered value to a client. I was like, that client walked away happy, didn't he? Right. And he's like, yes. I'm like, then do it again. Yeah. Do it again and again and again. And and that's that's the reality of getting qualified leads is you're already doing something right like you said agency so in theory you have an agency right like you have a business which if you have a business that means you have clients which if you had clients that means you somehow got a lead at some point so what did you do go do that again right i think also i do think looking at referrals is really important because there's really two sides to the game right help Sell more to your current people is one thing, or get them to recommend you to other people, but then there's kind of that like cold traffic, and I think everybody is hoping there's this magical cold traffic solution <laughs> where you run, like, just give me the ad swipe and tell me what to put on the landing page and what PDF to give them, and so I can just go run that to the world. Business is just, it's just not that, that linear. Uh, your success is more emergent. Um, doing all of the things is key, shaking a lot of hands being helpful. The number one thing in what you were saying there is that once you start doing a thing, do more of it, yep. then if it continues to work, you turn it into a system. Right. One question I always ask uh, when I take on a client is, what was your most successful marketing campaign? And, and they'll tell me. Is that followed up by why did you turn it off? Oh, I, they'll tell me and then I'll, then I'll ask. Are you still doing it? How, how often do you get a no? Pretty much always? Always. always. And then, then I go, okay, so well, then how often did you do it? Once. Once. Yeah. Right? That yeah. is the problem with getting qualified leads. Yeah. Is that you're not doing it enough. Yeah. It, you're not doing enough cold email. You're not doing enough uh, just direct outreach. All of you're the not, things. You're not spending enough time uh, talking to your uh, current customers asking for referrals. Yeah. You're not uh, doing enough marketing. You're, it's, you're just literally not doing enough. You already know what they are. There isn't any magic tactic. Because here's the thing, I've been doing marketing for 20 years. I never know if a marketing campaign is going to work until the market tells me. Data, till after. Until after. Right. And usually if you think you know what's gonna go on, you probably got it wrong. And, probably and, and got it wrong. And something awkward's gonna be coming right. out of it. So real quick, so I'm, I'm in the information space. I sell information with my wife. We sell digital downloads. And one thing that we've found is, like, so our business model, right, we've been running for nine years. We're doing the exact same thing we were doing last year. We're doing the exact same thing we were doing the year before. We're doing the exact same thing we were doing the year before that. When we first started, we started doing all kinds of different things, thinking that, okay, we did that once, now we gotta do something else. And all of a sudden, our income tanked because we were doing 
other things than what worked. And when we really committed to like, oh, we just keep doing that over and over and over. And to us, it almost feels a little weird to do the same thing over because we're creative. We feel like we need to do new creative. Yeah. We're here to do big things and bring new things out to the world. But the market wants that thing we've gotten really, really good at. And I know it's different because I'm not selling services, but the idea that our business is actually kind of boring and it's actually incredibly simple at this point and we're just like, I don't want to say going through the motions because we add our creative flair, we deliver with value, but boy, if we were always trying to do that next big, shiny, fancy lead gen system, uh, my main ad on Facebook ads that I still run to this day, I've run $100,000 through this ad, it's the same text, like it's just still working. So. I'm just going to keep running it until yes. it stops working. Now that's a very quant way and we're, we're learning and talking a lot about bringing brand into it and not just being direct response marketers. But from a cash flow perspective, when you get something that works, just go do more of that. If you don't know what worked, audit yourself. Go look back, retrace those steps, figure out what worked. We audit our email open rates every single month. We audit a lot of little things so we can look back and see what worked and then we try to okay, how, why did that work? And we'll test something new, but we'll keep doing that thing yes. that works. That, that's we'll try key. to improve on it with a test, with scientific data saying that this headline actually outperformed that one, but we're not gonna stop this one until I can beat it with something else. Yes, and then at some point, you may even bring it back and it'll yep. work again. Yep. That, uh, that's something that, that's why I asked that question. And then one of the first things I want to do is, well, let's, let's, turn run, that it, let's yep. run it. Yep. Uh, you haven't run it in three or four years or five years, yep. right? Well, then let's try it. And mail an offer to all your past clients. Right. Because that's usually a very quick way to get lots of income coming right. in. Right. So, so that, that's, that's the process for generating the leads. Okay. Any other, other questions? Stuff? Yes. Felipe would also like to know how to create a smooth customer experience with existing buyers. Smooth customer, customer experience. experience with existing buyers. I feel like that's a, um, so, like, are, are you talking about, like, uh, customer so this is a service. management right. services? Yeah, probably, like, like yeah. having, like, a customer specialist to where they have one point. So I see a lot of people trying to use intercom, and that system just bothers me. Like, like having a point contact for your clients is really key, because I think that, like, business owners are so incredibly busy, and if you start to confuse them, they're going to go find somebody who doesn't confuse them. Yes. So giving them one point of contact, don't be fancy, don't be fancy, email this person. This person is your person and anything you need, you always reach out to them and then the weight's on their shoulders. And that's their ultimate job is to make sure the experience is absolutely perfect. That way it's easy on your customers. It's easy for them to keep paying. They don't get confused with what's going on or balls don't get dropped because you literally have a key point person on there. I was that person for a long time in my agency and then like that needs to be removed. You need to have a customer retention specialist. They might be able to fulfill other roles. That's this guy's realm, but that's my uh, eventually two cents uh, like on there. everybody wears a million Multiple, hats, yeah. right? At first. This guy. But but so the, the thing is is when you're when you're trying to improve that customer uh, experience, the first thing you need to focus on is how do you interact? So yep. list all the interactions that you actually have with this person, because then you can go back and use data. Well, right. what, did, what did I say here? Or what did my uh, account rep say here that made the customer happy? Well, let's try it again. See if, see if it makes them happy, another customer happy. Oh, it does? Okay, now let's do it again and again and again. Oh, this thing that we said over here, or this thing that we did, this report that we sent, whatever that interaction was, it didn't get a good re a reception. Oh, we sent them a, a monthly report on what we did. They don't ever read it. Right. Well, then that's not a good interaction. Right. Right. So then, so then let's fix that. Well, what should we do? Oh, why don't we see if they will like talking with us and going through the report and show them how we made them money. Show, the, uh, show them how they can improve their business even further. Be a consultant. Yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe that improves the experience, right? Sometimes it's not adding, it's subtracting. I had a client I that, that removed some stuff from, uh, from doing their service and it made the customer happy. Uh, it was it was they were talking to the customer too much and yep. interfering with the customer's daily activities yep. and then they removed some of that and moved to uh, I think like once a month to once every uh, few weeks couple of weeks and the customers were far happier yep. with uh, with the interactions 
So sometimes it's a matter of removing what you're doing to improve the customer I mean, experience. For me, you know, put yourself in the business owner's shoes. For me as a business owner, like there's a few um, new teammates and, and potentially like services I'm trying to bring in to get some value to grow my business in these areas that aren't my specialty. And I'm having to just constantly go back and forth. And it's like, man, I really just want to give you your, my money and let you do that thing that you do. And I don't want to fucking hear from you. Like yes, I just, I yes. literally, I want to, like, I need you to produce a result without wasting my time, without a bunch of banter, without a bunch of this. I got shit to do, people. Well, which is funny because you can't do that with employees. Right. Right? Right. You can't just let your employees just do, give them money yeah. and let them do whatever. It never works out. No. Nothing I, gets done and the money goes but away. But when you're running an agency, if you understand that concept, right. you understand the concept that the your customer really doesn't want to talk to you. Right. So try... They want a result. They want a result. So do your best to deliver that result uh, and then and then showcase it with with flair, with, uh, with enough... Uh, um, uh, yeah, flair's uh, the best word. Like, give Spring it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it, make it a presentation. Make it an yeah. experience. Like, but that's what they want. But then over time, if you really, really want to keep that client for a long term, they have to start seeing you as a partner. Yeah, you can't just give them a result because then they'll just send, uh, start complaining that the result isn't nearly as good as it used to be. Right. Even if they're making far more money than they were previously. Or if you're in the SEO world, all of a sudden you got them all the rankings in the world, they got the traffic, what do I need you for? You've already got that result, but that's where you can mentor them, coach them, help them realize the opportunities that lie in front of them, because there's always further. In, in your always. business, in the client's business, everyone's business, there's always a further. And you know, one of the only three ways to make more money in a business is to sell more things to your current customers. Yeah. Um, that's one thing we're working on that's working incredibly well for our business. Um, Cool. Any yeah. other questions? No, what let's, yeah. let's see what else right, you got. Yes, we have one more question from Esteban. Esteban. Um, he would like to hear your thoughts on like comparing uh, productized services versus SaaS. Okay. Ooh. So, so I know I know him, and okay. and, I, and I did a follow up question, and he said that uh, uh, he has a productized service, okay, and believes it should be a SaaS because it's essentially the same thing over and over again. Well. SaaS. Like you, you I think literally... SaaS is a great business model. I mean, if I was smart enough or something, like to me, that business model, when it's done right, it could be a very nice business with very high margins, very high sellability. Like, like from a business model perspective as an investor, yes. which would you rather buy into a, a SaaS business producing X revenue or a productized service business X revenue? SaaS every time. All day long. All day long. All day long. So, but, but here's, here's why. Okay. Productized services, even as uh, popular as they became after John Warlow's book, uh, Built to Sell. Is that where it came from? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it had been around for a while, but he popularized it in that book. The problem is that a productized business, a productized service is vulnerable because if you are producing a service over and over and over again, Somebody's going to come in and do it cheaper. Right. Someone's going to come in. It becomes a race to the bottom. Right. It, it, it's, it becomes a commodity. Absolutely. That's the problem. So services, the only reason services need to even exist is when they're on the custom end. Yeah. When, they're, when they are high end. Yeah. Because at some point, sure, you can get a solid few, or f a few years out of a productized business. But at some point, someone's going to come along and take your lunch money. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's just part of the business. But so if you have something that's that you can re do repeatedly, you you're already a commodity, then systemize it because that's the only place you're going to get that additional margin right. necessary to, to continue to grow. That's why SaaS becomes the most logical thing to do with something that is repeatable. Turn it into a SaaS because now you've got the ability to scale, meaning that you can get more customers and keep your costs the same right. or lower or even lower your costs and get more customers. That's that's why SaaS is less vulnerable than a productized service. Boom. You heard it there. Um, man, SaaS businesses, when they're done right, like they can just grow at such rate. And when, when you become that thing that a business plugs into to get a result and it's, it's literally like plugged in and we build our business on it. Um, I got shopping cart services, like I pay 199 bucks a month. It's like, I will never, I, there is zero consideration in my mind to leave that SaaS. Unless right? they screw up. Unless they piss me off. Yeah, they, then, they have to do done. something. That, that's the thing with like a SaaS. If you do it well, 
you you have to screw up to lose the customer. Yep. But then, it, or they get too big for you and you don't have an ascension model. But with a productized service, it's easy to leave you. Yeah, and I think honestly on the product side service, like human nature, we all think we're special snowflakes, right? We all think that we're unique and and be like, I don't know, I look at a lot, well, well how are you gonna put me in this box? We're, we, we're different, right? We, we do things different here. And, and so maybe sometimes yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. And I do think that the custom solutions can bring more profit for you and it can actually bring greater satisfaction for the clients. But it's just more work. It, it's more thought. Yeah, and more, it goes yeah, in every proposal. There, there like are it, issues with it. Yeah, it, it's more challenging to do. Um, but, but it's that's less just vulnerable. A, exactly. So, so because the, you're not a commodity. Right. You're, you're not, not a commodity. Bag of soy. Right. That's the trick. Have there been productized services that have stayed outside of the commodity space? Had been, built a brand? I don't know. I can't I, be I, one. I, there probably has to be. Right. As big as the world is, there has to be. I, I've never met any of those people. Yeah. Uh, not not once. Yeah. So they exist most likely. I'm going to guess that. Yeah. But I've never met one that has had a productized service stay for years and, and continue to grow and succeed without competition coming in and taking their lunch right. money. Right. Raising right. them to the bottom of price. Any, anything else? No, that's it for today. All right. That's cool. it. That is it for today. Cheers. Thanks. This is, this is long. We did a whole episode for Miles' uh, uh, YouTube channel. That thingy. My that thingy. thingy. Yep. The YouTube thingy. Yep. And I'm going to air it on there. Granted, sad thing is... We were, we were looking at this camera. Yeah. So, so it'll look it's like a, a documentary. Weird. You know those yeah. fancy documentaries yeah. where they're not, not looking, looking at the camera? Right. That's all it is. It's yeah. just like that. So, so all these videos, the live ones, obviously, are going to stay uh, unedited. But we will have an edited version that's going to go onto my YouTube channel. And hopefully I can build as awesome of a YouTube channel as you Subscribe to his YouTube channel. He can't name the damn thing yet. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe it because he needs a certain number of subscribers to name it. So yeah. just search Tim Conley. You can find him. What's funny though, real quick sidebar, if you search Tim Conley on YouTube, I think the video on my channel of us yeah, is comes up current, even one. before yeah. your channel. Oh, so yeah, straight go up. subscribe to remedy that. He should yes. own the number one spot for his own name. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Sure. I got yeah. that right now. Cool. Cheers, y'all. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. All right. Hopefully you get some value out of that Q&A. What I want you to do right now is to go watch the actual episode where Miles and I have the discussion about building a marketing agency. You can find the link in the description below and hopefully I got the card thingy working up here on the screen. If you can click on that, you'll go straight over there, be able to watch the whole video. Definitely check out Miles' channel. He is one of the few people that I truly trust when it comes to internet marketing. And the cool thing is the stuff that you would find in a $2,000 course, he gives away completely for free in his YouTube videos. So go check them out.